the word of the Lord today is there's some of you that you're waiting on them to return from Sodom and Gomorrah. You're waiting on them to return from Sodom and Gomorrah. Some of you have had family members. Some of you have spouses, um, significant others that have stepped away from you and they have gone back into the world. They've taken a turn that is unexpected. They may have been saved at some point. They may think they are saved, but they have completely turned away, turned away from the things of God. And what you're doing is you're waiting. You're waiting for them to come back. You're looking out the window. You're texting them. You're sending them scriptures because you're waiting for them to come back from Sodom and Gomorrah. God says nothing comes back from Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah be, gets completely destroyed. You see, when Lot was leaving, he was looking around. His son-in-laws did not want to come along. <laughs> These were the husbands of their daughters, of his daughters. And the husbands didn't want to leave with the daughters. They stayed behind. Have you ever thought of that? I didn't either. The Holy Spirit just dropped that in me. There was warning. There was a great deal of wickedness and things that was going on. Warning after warning after warning. Uh, Lot and his family lived, lived righteously there. And many times the, 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 the citizens of that place will come against him. And the reason why I said this is because when those men came to get the angels, one of the things that they said is you think that you're better than us, right? And the thing is that indicates to me that this is not a first time go with Lot. For them to say that they have this mindset, you think you're better than us because you live differently from we do. And so they try to go against Lot. So guess what? Now, for Lot's sake, do you realize that Sodom and Gomorrah does, was not destroyed until Lot left it? So really, it was for the sake of Lot and his family and the favor he had with God that Sodom and Gomorrah had not been destroyed. And guess what? They kept hanging around to the point that the angels of the Lord had to grab him and his family's grab him in his wife's hands and lead them out because they were kind of hanging out a little bit and sticking behind the, the son-in-laws would not come. So guess what? These men were willing to stay behind and not go with their wives, right? And the wives, the daughters of Lot knew they could not stay even if it was their husband because the Lord had spoken a word. You understand that now some of you you're not married and that's fine but apply the same principles to other scenarios maybe someone you're dating maybe someone you're seeing maybe just someone you're related to and so you're out of Sodom and Gomorrah but you're still stuck because guess what you're like lot you're hanging around the edges of the city you're hanging around waiting for someone to come out of there and God is saying just like he told Lot, move forward. Any and everybody that is going to be saved will hear his voice and they will be given the opportunity to come on out of there. But if they stay in Sodom and Gomorrah, they will be destroyed. They will be destroyed. What God wants us to do as his people is to move ahead those of you that's hearing his voice move ahead some of you are moving ahead but you're mentally stuck because you're thinking about this person back there and so you're waiting for them to return you're waiting for them to return and God is saying I know your desires I know what you want and I am speaking to their hearts I'm giving them opportunities before it was in your heart to utter to me about them I spoke it to them but God says you can't be waiting you gotta move forward you can't be waiting you gotta move forward listen Abraham knew that lie he could see the smoke he could see everything that was going on but guess what? He didn't go over there. You can't go in to get them and you can't be near it. Remember, the Lord didn't say just go right out the go right out the city. He gave them a place to go. 
another place that he had prepared. So when this time of shaking and this time of recompense and this falling out that's coming, my brothers and sisters, God needs you to go to the shelter, go to the places that he's sending you to and stop trying to wait on the outskirts of the city. You see, a lot of times when they see you waiting and hanging around, they can see you right there at the outskirts. It's not going to make them come any faster. And it's not going to let them change. They wait on you to send them the next scripture. They, they wait to laugh and scoff at the next thing you say to them. So I hear God saying even now, it's time to stop sending these scriptures. It's time for you to stop trying to convince them. God says, it's time. Shh. The hand of the Lord is moving. And guess what? Sometimes your noise... <laughs> Your noise will bring things on you. You talking is going to bring things on you. Some of you may understand it. Some of you may not. Are you saying that? Don't pray for, for them. You pray for them. But when you hear the Lord say to stop, because it's possible, there's scripture where God has told people to stop praying. When he says to stop, you need to stop. Your prayer moves things in the heavens. You know that? So God's desire is to save our loved ones. God's desire is to save the person you love. God's desire is to, for your husband, your wife to be saved. And so when you're praying, he's listening. It comes up as an incense, but you must understand shifting and things are going on in the heavens. And so when God says to you, it's time to be quiet, that's exactly what time it is. You see, when they walked around the wall of Jericho, there was a time of silence and then there was a time to shout. But keep in mind, there's a time to shout and there was a time of silence. There are times, my brothers and sisters, that God is telling you to be silent because things are going up in the heavens. And so when he says, stop praying, stop trying to talk and reach out, obey him. I hear God saying, you're waiting on them to return from Sodom and Gomorrah. God is saying, I will not allow anything, anyone who is unrepentant in their hearts to come into the space, the area, the cleft or the rock that I have brought you into. An example that he gave me is this. Imagine somebody who, when Jesus was, when, when God was going to send the plagues to Egypt, to smite all the firstborn in, in um, Egypt, the sons. Imagine if they felt sorry for somebody. One of the, imagine if one of the Egyptians wanted to come in and bring their son into their space because they know they have the blood on the door. What would have happened then? What would have happened if one of, okay, let's say something else. What happened if one of the Israelites, the children of Israel, just didn't feel like putting the blood above the doorpost of their house and let me come stay in here with you? What do you think would have happened? It boils down to obedience. It boils down to obedience, my brothers and sisters. That's what it boils down to. And God is saying there is a time of shaking, a time of recompense, a time of breaking that's going to come. And God is saying when you're hanging around, when you're trying to still hold on to, you're still waiting. God is saying you are not focused. You see, when you're like this and you're waiting, everything is going to be affected. God is saying you're waiting for people to return from Sodom and Gomorrah. But God is saying you need to move forward. It's time for you to move forward. Don't worry about what's going to happen back there. Nothing unclean is going to come out of there. Nothing defiant and, and that defies God's and his laws is going to come out of there. And anyone who gets out of there is a person that's going to take heed to my words before destruction falls. Not a moment before that. Unless they submit to me. Unless they turn themselves completely over to me. Unless they obey my voice. They will not be spared. But God is saying for you, stop looking back. Stop waiting on them. Move forward in Jesus' name.